Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to talk about five things you may not know about Photoshop CS5. That's right, five little things. They've been there since Photoshop CS5 day one, but they're little things so you may not have come across them yet and hopefully these will help you in your workflow. So let's take a look at the first thing. I have a photo here, a portrait. Hasn't been retouched, haven't done anything to it. It's pretty much right out of the camera. But one of the things I, I'm real, uh, real stickler for is, is just eyes. And in this case, I'm really not happy with the eyes because only from the standpoint they're not sharp. Again, that's my fault. You know, that's a focus issue. But what I would normally do in this case is sharpen. But I would use all the other methods of sharpening before I would ever touch the sharpen tool in Photoshop before. Because in Photoshop previous, if you sharpen a couple strokes, you might see it look better. But then if you kept going, you'd end up with something that looked like that. The Christmas tree effect, as I like to call it. And it's just unacceptable. It's just not professional. It's just not something you would ever be able to sell. Maybe it's a special effect, but that's about it. So let's undo that. And let's talk about the first new thing in Photoshop CS5 is that the Sharpen, along with a couple other tools now, can protect detail. This is on by default. I actually went and turned it off just to show you the way it used to work. But now, when Protect Detail is on, I can now go through and sharpen those eyes up without the crazy Christmas tree, uh, you know, discoloration effect. And the eyes will just get sharper and sharper. Now, of course, I can overdo it, and if I go too far, it will start to destroy the image. But just like most things in Photoshop, if you go too far, it will start to destroy the image. But I can get a much sharper area of a photo without, without worrying about it so quickly destroying the image using the protect detail. And of course, you have a strength control and you have other controls as well to make that tool work just the way you want it to. So again, as long as you don't overdo it, you will you will appreciate the sharpen tool much more than you ever have before. And I now use it all the time. And just a quick thing that's bothering me here. Let's just go ahead and use a little healing brush there to get rid of that little pimple. Okay, so now, second thing is drag and drop. Now, I've talked about this one before, so you may have seen me do this before. This is, again, a little thing in Photoshop CS5, but the ability to take an image, whether it's in Mini Bridge, which is what I just brought up, a new feature in CS5, whether it's in regular Bridge, whether it's in the Finder or Windows Explorer operating system, you can now drag a document into another photo, open Photoshop document. And it will just place it, and it will be its own layer um, actually as a smart object. So I can grab another one and place that one. And again, these are now layers in Photoshop as smart objects. So that's the second thing is that you no longer have to open the document up copy the contents over or drag a layer over, you can now drag one document into another to place that document inside of Photoshop. Okay, third thing, and this is kind of cool. This is one of my favorites also. And that is the ability to control the opacity of multiple layers at the same time. So for example, if I select two layers or three layers or 10 layers, how many ever layers I have, in the past I'd either have to do some kind of grouping or stacking together to control the opacity, or I'd have to do it manually one by one. Now I can grab two or more layers and just drag the opacity with the scrubby slider, by the way, that's not new, but a lot of people don't know that's there. You just drag on the name opacity, and it's now lowering the opacity of both of those selected layers at the same time. So that was your third one. Okay, so your fourth one, Let's go ahead and make a selection. And with that selection made, if I wanted to hide that selection, well, since, the, since day one, since as long as I can remember using Photoshop, that would be on the Mac, Command-H. On Windows, that would be Control-H. It's been that way since day one. However, when Mac OS X came out, Apple kind of designated command H to be hide the application. In other words, you want to get the application out of your way, you want to get what's behind it, you hit command H and minimizes it to the dock. Well, our customers on both sides of the fence said, 
you know what, you should change it to Command H. You should change it, you should make it like all the rest of my Mac applications. And then on the flip side, it was, no, 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 don't change it. I'm used to it being Command H. And by the way, Windows users still want it to be Control H. So don't change it. And of course, we we battled back and forth on this for years. Well, now, no more. In Photoshop CS5, when you hit Command H for the first time on the Mac, you will get this dialog. And it will basically ask you, what do you want to set your preference to? Hide the extras, which is the selection, as it always has done, which is the default, or hide Photoshop the application, which will make it your default. So you choose which you're more passionate about, whether you want to hide the application like the rest of your Mac OS X applications, or whether or not you want it to hide the selection itself. And once you make that, once you make a choice, it becomes your default preference, and you can go back in your preferences and change it if you ever decide to. I will keep it hide extras, but I'll cancel for now in case I want to show that to someone else. Okay, last but not least, let's close all of this up. Let's close this document. And I have a bunch of uh, Photoshop files here. I'm just going to select the last one, shift select the first one, hit enter so they all open. And now they're all open in Photoshop, and if I were to close them all right now, they would just close. But if I go make a change to each one, so let's say I grab my brush tool, and I've got my brush tool set to 1% opacity, which means you won't be able to see the stroke. I'm just going to click. The minute I click, I have changed the pixels. You may not be able to see it, but Photoshop says, you've made a change. And it puts a little asterisk there, letting me know that that document is unsaved with a change. So I'll just go to each one, click. Again, you can't visually see any difference, but I am physically making a change to the pixels, even though it's 1% opacity and no human eye would see it. I am making a change. Now, the point of me making all these changes, whether you can see them or not, is that once you've made changes to your open documents and you're done for the day, you, you now want to close them all and you want to save them all. You want to save all your changes. That's why I made it so you couldn't see it, because I, do, I don't want it to alter these. But let's say I do want to save it and close all my documents. Well, I could go to File and Close All. But what, what that would do in the past is bring up a dialog box for every single document. Do you want to save? 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 And I'd have to click Yes, 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 Yes. Now when I say Close All, I can click save, but before I click save, I get the ever important apply to all. So if I say apply to all and click save, like magic, they're all closed, they're all saved, all at the same time, the kind of workflow you would expect or want by now with these kind of applications. So that's five things you may not have known about Photoshop CS5. Have a great Monday. Hope this all works for you. Hope it works great for you and your workflow going forward. Thanks again for watching. My name is Terry White.